On today's episode of Watch Chargo, I'm gonna show you how good of a car you can buy with your $600 stimulus check. Got it right here, baby. Look at that. Uh-huh, signing everything, that's official. We got that hand signature. It's not fake. <laughs> I pr I just, this, uh, let's go cash this. All right, <laughs> good luck. <laughs> What is going on guys? I'm Watch Chargo and today I'm here with my stimulus car. Huge shout out to uh, Congress, I guess. Uh, this is the best car you can buy with your $600. So, let's put some gas in it. And we are back at the warehouse with my new Lincoln Continental that I paid $600 for and maybe also they got a Christmas present that might have been around $200 more. But about $600, the price of a stimulus check. Uh, facelifted, 2001 Lincoln Continental with the Inatech V8, the 32 valve quad cam. It's got four of everything. It's got four cams. It's got four valves. I mean, four wheels. What else do you want? That's a lot of fours. Anyway, let's take a tour of this ninth generation Lincoln Continental. Speaking of ninth generation, you know this car was in production for 55 years. I mean, one of my dreams is like a suicide Continental with a Duramax on bags, on 20s. I want like the perfect old school Continental drop top too. Obviously a drop top with a Duramax in it. And I just wanna idle that thing down the highway in the absolute lap of luxury because the old Continentals are so cool and the newer Continentals are still excellent cars. Lincoln, how'd you do so well for 55 years? Yeah, I know there's a few missteps in the middle, but. Great car, great color, this pearl. I know it doesn't really come out on camera. It looks like beige, but it's more of an off-white with a pearl and it pops. I love the way it looks. Let's take a look around this car. First of all, I did want to know, it's got Douglas's on it. All right, so there's a little bit of vagueness in the front end sometimes, even though the steering seems solid. And they did tell me all four tires are new and it's a matching set. Yep, Douglas all seasons all the way around. Great tread depth. I'd say that was a great deal right there. What, what do tires cost on a car like this? Four or $500. So uh, I think we're doing all right right there. Let's start under the hood. Okay, here we go. Let's take a look at this monster of a power plant. Basically the Ford 4.6 liter mod engine. You can find it in the Mustangs as well. Uh, aluminum block in here. They did some cast block ones on some of the Mustangs, but uh, there we have it in all of its glory. It's got a truck battery basically. 917, that's not a bad date on a battery. I like that, it's not terribly old. No cooling issues. I just drove it basically 40 miles and had no problems at all out on the highway. It's got a little bit of a misfire, but it still gets you home and that's what matters. There's really not much to note under here. It's a big V8, front wheel drive, front engine. So of course it has a transaxle that sits right over there. And one of the stranger things about this car is it has an air filter housing about the size of the diesel trucks from that era. I think it's about the same one that was on the 7.3s. Pretty crazy. I'm sure they share the same part. That is a huge air filter housing. Uh, the owner said the lift struts were bad, but... They are. Okay. Well, they do stay up, but it wouldn't be a Watch Jericho car if it came with good hood struts. <laughs> so uh, I, I'm okay with this. I'm totally okay with this. This line's been patched a lot. Oh, look at that. It just unpatched itself again. Uh, that. What's weird is it works. <laughs> I should cut all this hose out and replace it properly. But that's uh, really not a big issue there compared to the other things that could go wrong with this car. Uh, the owner also said he did valve cover gaskets a few years back. It looks like it might need done again because clearly the uh, seals are leaking around the bolts. But we'll really get into this and figure out what's wrong with the car down the road. But there you have it, the 275 horsepower, 275 foot-pounds of torque, four of everything, Intec V8. A quick walk around the exterior to see what we're dealing with here. We've got one headlight that's pretty good looking and one headlight that's less good looking. It does have auto headlamps. This thing's really loaded for what it is. I know it's like that secret luxury, kind of like that X5. Uh, the X5 seems like it has no options, this thing, Actually seems like it has a ton of options for how old it is. Over here, it looks like somebody found one of those poles in like a parking stall or maybe a green Honda Civic. One of the two. Not sure what happened. Uh, the tires, again, look to be in excellent shape. They said they hold air just fine, even though they were airing them up when we showed up. I'm good with that. 
We'll find out how well they hold air. Man, I'm not seeing too many issues. I'm not even seeing too much hail, which is odd. There's no golf ball pattern on the roof. Obviously, it's been sitting outside for a long time. The car is covered in tree deposits. So cleaning it up might go a long way. Let's get the... Well, I was gonna get the trunk open. I think the trunk has foiled us. All right, I'll get the trunk open. Here we go. Stand by. Hey! Almost an auto opening trunk with those springs, which is always nice. Back here, we don't have the CD changer option. We do have the good old air compressor switch for the air suspension. You can turn it on and off, just like the old limo. Uh, if you missed my videos on my Panther Platform limo, it was an old town car, superior built funeral limousine. That thing was amazing. And yeah, these are a different platform. They're the FN9 and not the Panther, which is really like the Ford Taurus and the Mercury Sable and the Windstar, I think, the minivan. They built a whole bunch of stuff on this car, but it's front front instead of front rear, like the town car and all those. So it's a different platform. I do wish it was a rear wheel drive because burnouts would be fun. Anyway, we've got a spare. Spare looks like it's been used, but reasonable. Dirt all over that. The jack's sitting in there. And of course we have an emergency release for the fuel. That's the trunk. It's a big trunk. Glow in the dark release handle if you get trapped inside. I don't know. I was gonna jump in, but I might get trapped inside. Yep, <laughs> I would leave. All right, let's jump inside this 2001 luxury cruiser. Look at that, the door. The door is just covered in all kinds of good stuff. We got the fuel release, the trunk release. You can put the key in there and lock out the trunk release, which is always cool. Unlock, lock, seat controls, mirror controls. And it. I think these are auto. There's that air compressor. She's coming up really slowly, but I can feel the car moving. <laughs> it does work. Let's see if these windows are auto. Hey, will they auto up? Oh, they don't. And that one doesn't auto down. Well, at least they all work and there's no grinding out of the regulators. So I'd say we're doing all right. Oh, as soon as I say that, that <laughs> one starts grinding. Anyway, all the other windows sound pretty good. Inside the cockpit, we've got auto lights, auto lamp delay, auto, oh, cool, cool. Auto lamp off, auto lamp delay, let's call it one minute. Panel dimming over here and headlights on and off. We have an error on the dash for low washer fluid. I'd say that's the least of our worries from the error perspective there. Let's see, it might change back. There we go. Low washer fluid, you can see 218,490 miles. Quite a few miles on this car. Moon miles, almost. We almost made the quarter million right here. We're missing a cruise control button. This is the cruise activation over here. It works just fine though. If you push on, it's a speed control ready. <laughs> and that's speed control off. Both buttons work great, even if they're missing. And the cruise did work. I just drove it here and uh, worked out perfectly the whole time. We've got wipers, not auto or anything fancy like, like the new cars. A four speed automatic transmission, column shifted like it's a cop car. You feel like you're in a, every old police movie. Anyway, so that's how that works. Over here on the dash is where the magic starts happening. We have the clock, as always, a classy touch. All the controls for the digital uh, gauges here. Vehicle handling, you can see, please close door. Vehicle handling, we can change the steering feel here. Uh, it actually has a damper on the steering rack that changes the amount of uh, hydraulic fluid passing through the rack, which is really cool. Got some system controls, which is nice to see here. We've got battery, engine temp, oil level, coolant level, low washer fluid, doors closed, trunk closed, exterior lamps, okay. Fuel level, okay. In the menu, we can turn trash control off. There's the auto down window. Uh, automatic locks, horn chirp when it locks, seat access moves the seat when you get in and out of the car, reverse mirrors, and of course you can change between English and metric. Uh, so that is the menu and trip computer. Uh, you can turn the display on and off and distance to empty and fuel economy. For the audio system, we actually have the optional Alpine system in here. It does not have the CD changer, which is unfortunate, but it does have cassette and an amplifier and a subwoofer and some additional speakers. It, it sounds okay. It doesn't really keep up with modern music, but it does work. Auto climate, the auto climate works perfectly, just like I'd expect. Set it to 72 degrees and forget it. it does everything that you want. Down here we have the cup holders and they fling open and then you go like that and you have additional cup holders and you can push it back shut. What's funny is it looks like an old VHS tape holder out of an old conversion van. That's, that is a huge bunch of plastic right there. We've got Homelink, which was an option and Every single button is programmed. They're not flashing. 
pretty funny. Lighted mirrors, wouldn't have it any other way. It's a luxury car. Uh, sunglasses holder, garage door opener holder, which is funny because it has home link and uh, a mirror with a compass in it. There's not too many options, but you know, for its time, it's honestly really well equipped. Uh, here we have armrests. Inside the armrest, we have a change holder and possibly a cassette tape, a thing you could add in there or CDs, so you can put your CDs beside your arm. In this armrest, we have auxiliary power, which is crazy. They ran power wires into this old movable armrest. And of course, if you don't want the armrests, you can flip them out of the way and uh, find the cleanest leather in the entire vehicle. Right there, the rest of it not looking so hot. We've got Zach here with us. Uh, let's take a look inside the glove box. Anything cool in there? Airbag. Oh my gosh, dude. Wait, do you have a concealing carry? Yes. Oh, I'm glad you do because that's uh Oh my. Woo, nothing hits harder than an old Lincoln Continental. Huh? All right, we better put that away. Put that away. Okay. <laughs> Can't have that. And check this out. The quirkiest of the features in this car, the vents. You can aim them or you can literally adjust them in and out of the dash to really get the angle that you need on that air. You know, that's very precise air adjustments right there. <laughs> Inside the back door, we have seats that weirdly are dirty. I've never seen dirty seats in the back of a car. It's just such an odd thing. Uh, this thing has been well used and there's our, it must be the subwoofer pod there. That's a big old speaker grill in the back of this. Anything in the, oh, there's something in there. What is this? Ah, is that from the door right here? Ah, it is. It is the reflector from the door. Well, I thought we had found gold, but we did not. So that is a tour of my ninth generation 2001 Lincoln Continental, the facelifted body style. So now let's get it out on the road and see what it drives like. See if it holds up to today's standards. Out on the highway in my Lincoln Continental to drive the car. And let's just listen for a minute here. A Little bit of road noise, just glides along. We're going over bumps. You just, you really don't even feel them. I mean, I'm sitting on a couch this thing is great to drive. You're kind of pointing a boat down the road and hoping it goes the direction you want it to go, kind of like a boat. And uh, that's what it is, but it's a very, very comfortable boat. There's not a lot of effort put into driving this thing. Uh, everything seems to work so far. Like I said before, uh, climate works great. The auto climate works great. The radio is great. Take a look at the ghost gauges as we get on the road. You can see it's one of those floating needle designs. It's supposed to look like there's nothing connecting them. 17.3 miles per gallon right now. This is an excellent use of your $600. Not to mention you, you sure feel classy when you've got a clock. The adjustable steering feel is great as well. It works perfectly. I've got it on high because I like it to be sort of heavy. And uh, when it's on low effort, like the car is always kind of hunting in the lane. So this is just the way I like it. Honestly, a great car to cruise around it. If I was going on a long road trip, I'd probably jump in this. You can throw four friends in this car. You can trust it to make it anywhere you want to go, which means it's basically a vacation on wheels. So maybe the perfect use of your stimulus check. You can go relax, just go find grandma's car. That's all you gotta do. It's either grandma or grandpa's. There's gotta be one of these sitting around in your city and man, perfect car. I just pulled up to a stop and this thing was surging quite a bit. At first I thought it was actually the brakes, like a warped rotor or something like that. An all too familiar feeling. It's actually the misfire, I think, because uh, as you really stop, it still shudders even more. So it's quite the misfire. It's time to do a little diagnosing on this thing. But that's our main issue. And the other problem with this car is I keep hearing the uh, air suspension compressor run every probably three minutes, which seems like way too much. I'm pretty sure these things usually run for you know a minute or so on startup. And after that, you don't usually hear them again, maybe once every 30 minutes or something like that. So I bet one of the air shocks is leaking down pretty hard. Uh, the last owner said that it was holding up just fine. So kind of weird, but we'll find out how well it holds up. I'll leave it parked for a couple days. If there's one thing we can all agree on to end 2020, it's that the stimulus bill was a joke. The meme game was insane. I've loved the last few days, but if you need something to do with your $600, hopefully you can find a car like this. It's pretty good. Anyway, that is it for today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a happy new year. This is actually the 31st. You're seeing this today. So have a great new year. 2021 should be more fun. Thank you guys so much for watching. There's so much to come on the warehouse. Don't forget to head on over to shop, watchjr.com where you can get cool shirts just like this. And please like, share, subscribe, do whatever you wanna do. And I will talk to you next time. Thanks Zach.
You're welcome. Now I can get back to X5s. You got blood on me. I'm gross. Nah, my hand stopped bleeding, but this car did it to me. This car cut me when I went to put gas in it. Uh, also on the X5, the reason we did this instead of that is because after the comments, I went and bought that air hammer tool to get the fan clutch off and it'll be here at like 9 p.m. tonight. Obviously, I can't work on that if it shows up at 9 p.m. because the video has to come out by 11.45. Just, just doesn't work out. So X5 for $1 coming up very soon. Maybe we'll do the giveaway tomorrow. We'll see. The only reason we had to stop in the warehouse, ran out of oxygen. Time to go get a refill. Dumb. Cool.